Hi everyone, it's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique. And today I want to show you guys another way of doing flat herringbone stitch using odd count. So in most of my previous videos using herringbone stitch for flat work, we normally, uh, we always start out with a ladder bead base. You can make this ladder stitch uh, base either two beads high, such as this one is, or you can ladder stitch the beads together one at a time depending on your preference and it also depends on how you want the end of your uh, beadwork to look so if you do it this way when you get to the opposite end you would have to letter stitch together your last two sets of beads but we'll talk about that and I've talked about that before in project videos so let's take a look at what I have here I picked up four beads at the beginning two of the frosted teal two of the um, the jonquil lined green Two, then added a uh, ladder stitch those together, added two more teal, two more of the green, and two teal at the end. And because I have an odd count here of five sets of beads, you'll notice that when uh, I end up with my working thread exiting the top of this bead. When we have an even number of beads on the base rope, both threads end up exiting on the same side of the bead, of the beadwork, like that. So we don't have to do any particular weaving back here we don't have to step up we're already in position and we can begin to bead so why would you want to use an odd count well you know to create pattern obviously to have a center line in your project is another reason that you would um, it's just a, it's a design option and I want to show you guys how to do it in case you ever decide you want to give this a try so um, for this particular project, uh, this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to do, uh, do your single stitch on the end of the beadwork. Um, I'm on the blog post, I'm also going, another blog post actually, I'm going to show you guys this, um, how to create pattern using different colored beads. It's be very similar to this. And I'll show you guys in that blog post how to do your odd count um, uneven row in the center of the work. But for right now, we're going to stick with doing it on the end. So what we're going to do, uh, normally, you know, when we, for herringbone, when we're sitting in this position, we would pick up two beads. We would come down through the top uh, bead in the next column, just like this. But what we're going to do in this instance, is I'm going to pick up two of the same color beads as the bead I'm exiting. So two of these little teal beads. We'll let those drop down. We're going to skip over the first bead, and we're going to come back down through just that second bead, like that right there. And then kind of pinch it with your fingers, or your thumb and your finger, pull it all into position, and just situate it just like this on top of the beadwork. Mm -hmm. So it's a little loose, but as we work our way back through, we will pick that up, and it, we will catch it with the thread bridge. So now we need to... Actually, we should have come down through two. I'm sorry. Go through one more bead. Just like that. And now we can step up into this next row. Through the top bead. Just like this. And now we're just going to do herringbone straight across. So we'll pick up the color we're exiting and the color we're entering in that order. We'll go down through the top bead on our ladder base in the next column. Situate our beads like you normally would in herringbone and then step up into the next one. And we're going to do the last stitch on the row. I'm exiting from a green bead. I pick that up first. I'm going into the teal bead. I pick that up second. And then I pass down through the top bead on the last column. And then to step up, I'm going to reverse direction and come up through the green bead beside the one I'm exiting. I'm going to pull that through, making sure my thread bridge pops in between underneath those two beads that I'm working with right here. Right here. Like that. And then I'm just going to step up through the bead on the end. And pull my thread. And make sure that my thread sucks in there and doesn't leave a big loop of thread showing. So now I'm going to flip my work and work back in the opposite direction. 
So this time we're coming out of the teal bead first. So I'll pick up a teal and then a green. I'm going to come down through the next bead just like we normally do in herringbone. Take my stitch. Get my beads uh, situated. Step up into the next column. And then I'm going to take my next stitch. I'm exiting teal. I pick that up first. I'm entering the green, so I pick that up second. And then I just pass down through the next green. And then when I step up, I'm just going to step up into that top bead. Just like that. And as I pull... You'll see that it kind of positions that bead to where it sits catty corner, like the green beads here, here, and now there. Actually, I probably should have stepped up through two. Let's try that again. I had an exposed thread there, so now I'm exiting this bead. I need to step up through both of these beads. So I'm going to do it one at a time. I'm going to come up through that bead first. Sorry, folks. I haven't done this in, uh, too much of this. I just recently learned how to do this. So then I'm going to come up through the top bead, like so, and that looks much better. And give your beads a little uh, straightening up before we progress to the next row. So let's flip it around and let's do another row. I just flip it around because I prefer to sew in this direction. All right, so now I'm ready to pick up two beads again. I'm going to let them drop down. I'm going to skip over that first bead. Just move it out of the way if you want to. And then we're going to come down through two beads right there. And that ties. It ties this bead to this bead. So now we can step up. It puts us into a position where we can step up without having a visible thread. So we'll step up. And then we'll just do our herringbone just like we did previously. We're going to pick up our two beads and come down through the next bead. And we're going to step up into the next column. And we'll do the last stitch. We'll pick up our two beads and come down into the next bead. And you can do this with all the same color beads, just however you want. We're just practicing and learning a new stitch here. So now we're exiting this bead. To do my turnaround, I need to come up through the bead right beside of it, but in the backwards direction, back to the left for me. So I'll come up there, make sure my thread gets situated in there to where it's not uh, creating a nice, a big visible white thread. Then I'm going to come up through the top bead and do the same thing. Snug my thread in nice like that. I'm going to flip my work and then work back in the opposite direction. So now we got to do our two stitches of herring, but we're just reversing the color we pick up first. Come down through the next bead. Step up. And as you work, pay attention to where the thread bridges actually appear. As we add this stitch, we're creating a thread bridge between the beads of the previous row, this bead and this bead. As you can see on this side, because we haven't added a stitch yet, there is no thread bridge here between those two beads. And we're getting ready to add one, so we'll pick up our two beads. We'll pass down the next bead. And then as we step up, we're going to step up through those two beads on the end, just like we did on the last time we had an increase. Let me position my needle a little better. Yeah. Get myself worked up into that bead like that. So see, now we're creating the thread bridge between that bead and that bead. Because we pick up two beads each time, you'll see that um, we don't need, actually have to do a stitch at, as we get to the end of this row. We're, we're accomplishing that at the beginning each time we pick up two on this end. So now we're going to flip it around. And we would just keep doing this 
on and on and on. We'd start with cheap eats and everything, but I want to show you something here. So if you'll notice, because I'm choosing to work my increase here on the end of the row each time, you can see that I have a tiny bit of exposed thread. So in other, in two ways I would um, counter that problem if I were actually making a project out of this. One of the easiest ways to counter it is to use um, some beading thread that is less visible than this white. So you could either use black, you can use, I think, uh, both Fireline and uh, Wildfire beading thread also have like a kind of a greenish colored thread nowadays. Personally, I've never bought in it because I just use a, a nylon beading thread. And we talked about nylon beading threads in a previous video and I showed you guys how to condition and stretch and how to prepare your thread when you're getting ready to uh, use the nylon threads. And nylon threads also give an extra drapey feel to herringbone work. Herringbone is a beautiful, lovely drape to it. Um, of course, something this small, you, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell what I'm talking about. But in a larger piece, you will see that it flows and bends and curves. It's really elegant feeling piece of jewelry. And if you used a nylon thread, you would even get more of that effect. But if you want something stiff and firm, you're definitely going to have to stick to these braided fishing lines. I don't think I'm going to do a video where I show you how to do this in the middle of the row because basically it's just as simple. You pick whichever row that you want to, to um, be your, your odd man out row. You work regular herringbone until you get to it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then you would just pick up the two beads and do the technique on that particular column, and then continue regular herringbone across to the other side. Uh, but the blog, but I'm going to do a, you know, I'm going to do a separate blog post for that on the blog, and I will throw a link to it into this video once I get everything written up, so you'll be able to have a link right away to get to both um, blog posts regarding this odd count. All right, so that is it, guys. It's fairly simple. There's not much to it. It's just uh, one stitch is different. The rest of it's just straight out flat herringbone. Okay, so if you haven't lately checked out the blog, head over there, see what's cooking on the alluringbeeboutique.com. Head over to my shop and check out my patterns. Um, YouTube did give me a new option for the membership channel. I'm thinking about that. I haven't quite made up my mind how I want to go about that yet, but um, I'll let you know, guys know what I decide a little bit later. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. If you want to follow the full Bead Weaving 101 Herringbone Stitch series on the website, head over there and make sure you uh, click like on the, um, on the content and then add your name to my email list and you will be notified every time a new post publishes. And don't forget to subscribe to my BeadMat newsletter. Alright, thanks folks and have a great day.